All right, folks, we're gonna be going over all of the settings and uses for this Astro AI CM2 K0R AC clamp meter. Um, if you're a beginner with electronic measurements, this video should be for you. We'll talk about all the different settings, the symbols mean, some of the applications for this meter. I think if you're an RV or a camper person, this would be a really great option. I mean, yeah, a homeowner I think would work too. I think this meter is great for that application because it's at a really low price point with a lot of functions. So that way, if you do take it in the RV, or have it in the camper and it gets lost or broken or something like that, you're only out, you know, 20 or 30 bucks as opposed to if you invested in something a little bit nicer, you'd be out for quite a bit more. If you've already purchased this meter, great for you. We'll go through all of it. If you're on the fence about it, uh, you really can't be Astro AI for that low end price. So let's go ahead and start getting into it. We'll start at the top of the wheel in the off position and just run through it counterclockwise. The instruction manual is pretty clear, but if you're unsure, uh, anytime you see, this is supposed to represent a little sine wave. And every time you see that squiggly line, it's gonna represent alternating current. So the amp clamp for this device is only rated for measuring alternating current. You can't measure any DC current or direct current, you can only measure DC voltage. So that's one thing right off the bat, that's pretty common for a meter set up like this, is it's only rated for AC. The other reason why I bring up RVs is this is gonna be great for checking volts and amperage from your shore power or from your generator, uh, making some basic measurements there. Down here, this solid and dashed line is gonna represent your DC, so that's for volts DC. That little horseshoe there is for ohms or resistance. And that symbol next to it is going to be for capacitance. This symbol here with the arrow is going to be for diode. And then this symbol here that looks like it's almost like a speaker or sound, that's going to be for continuity. And basically what that means, if you're measuring a wire and the resistance of it is low enough, it'll show that it has continuity. The diode and capacitance setting, you're almost never gonna need, so if that sounds kind of confusing, don't even worry about it. Mostly for this, a meter like this, you're gonna be utilizing, uh, you know, AC amperage, AC volts, DC volts, resistance, continuity. And then they do have a non-contact voltage detection, which I think is really great. Basically that's, you don't have to use any probes or anything like that to sense a live AC circuit. Um, it does come with a couple little things that I like. It does have a nice little backlight which is great. And then it has a forward facing flashlight for troubleshooting. Again, if you're on a campground or something like that and it's dark out, that's a nice little feature. And then it has a button here with an H and that stands for hold. So basically all that means is if you're trying to make a measurement and you wanna keep that measurement, you can press that H there and it'll go ahead and hold that for you. So you have it if you need to jot it down or something like that. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first setting is gonna be your two to 400 amp AC range. I would say just like completely ignore that. The most you're ever gonna be doing as a, like a DIY homeowner, RVer kind of person, usually this two 20 amp setting, if for whatever reason you're working with 30 or 40 amps, like say it's your shore power, then yeah, go ahead and put it on that two or 400. Basically all it says is that you're trying to use the amp clamp for a lot higher amperage measurement. Most of the time when you're gonna be using the amp clamp, it shouldn't be that many amps. A lot of things don't take nearly as much current as you would imagine. You're probably thinking of like, well, my breaker panel at my home, you know, a lot of my circuits are at 15 or 20 or 40 amps. Well, those breakers are rated for two to sometimes three times the amount of current. That's gonna be a lot, your rated current and your working current are gonna be two different things. Oftentimes the current from your breaker panels that's actually running through that circuit's much, much lower. And let's go ahead and give you an example. Amp clamps are great because they're safe. I really don't like measuring amperage or current other than with an amp clamp. So say you have your AC circuit, it's live, you're trying to see how much current it's pulling. Maybe it's pulling too much. Maybe it's not pulling at all. Go ahead, get your clamp and you're gonna wanna put it around either a hot or a neutral. What do I mean that by that? Well, if you have like shore power or an extension cord or something like that, it's gonna contain your hot, your neutral and your ground all in one. 
And when you try to measure your hot and your neutral at the same time, they're gonna cancel each other out, okay? So it can be either the hot or the neutral. It's not a big deal. So we're getting 200 milliamps of current right there, which checks out. I've compared that to other really high-end accurate uh, measuring devices. I like to see how low they'll measure on the or to get an idea of accuracy. So I like to measure low amounts of current with an amp clamp like this, and that's right in the ballpark. So that's a pretty good measurement there. Next, we have volts AC. And if you're not sure which port to plug your probes into, your black will go into COM and your reds to input. So for this next measurement, we'll use the probes. You're only gonna use the clamp portion for the amperage AC settings, these first two up here. The rest you're gonna do with these probes. Let's go ahead. So for measuring AC voltage, you're not worried about polarity. What do I mean by that? You're not gonna be worried about if the if the black needs to go to neutral or if the red needs to go to hot, anything like that, you can do your measurement either way. This measurement's done in parallel with the circuit as opposed to in series. So if you see in series, it would be like that. You're not gonna get a reading like that, okay? One probe to the hot, one probe to the neutral. There you go, volts AC. Volts DC, polarity is gonna be involved and it's gonna be indicated on your meter by a negative sign. You see that negative sign that keeps popping on and off? So what does that mean? So in DC, we're gonna wanna think red to red, black to black. Boom, coming back at 12 volts. So your, your volts DC setting, obviously like if you're an RV, you're gonna be working with 120, 240 AC, and then on the DC side, 12, 24, and possibly 48 volt DC systems. There is no, there's no amps. DC measurement setting on this little guy, which is fine. Uh, I think this, this does so much for the price point. Next, we're gonna be looking at the resistance and capacitance settings on here. Probably not a bad idea. I've got these little clips down in my store. I think they're really handy. They just, they're kind of universal. They'll just slide onto any probe. They're good for doing measurement stuff like this, at least on video. So this is auto ranging meter as well, which is really nice for this price point, which means Something that you're gonna notice down here, it's gonna tell you the amount of resistance. And you see how there's a K there? It sounds for kilo. So it's saying this resistor is being measured at 47,000 ohms. So you, if you see a K there, move that decimal. One, two, three, 47,000, 47 kilo. You see a capital M, that would be mega ohms. So that's even bigger, millions of ohms. If you see a lowercase m, milli ohms, very, very small. So we'll go ahead and do, what are we doing next? Capacitance. For capacitance testing, I don't know. I think this is more of a gimmick on these meters. You'll wanna make sure your capacitor is discharged. Capacitors are labeled for their negative and positive, but the reality is an electrolytic capacitor like this can be used for AC or DC. It was a big argument on my Instagram. Anyways, if you wanna feel really cool, do your positive to red and then that negative sign for negative for black function would be helpful. Okay, so this is saying 600 microfarads. I believe that's what they're trying to get at with the little M. You'll wanna check your owner's manual on that, but basically you'll set it to this resistive symbol. You'll hit the function key and that'll bring you into your capacitance setting and you can verify that by this F capacitance is measured in farads. So I hope that's helpful for that. Next we have diode and continuity. Oh yeah, you'll wanna make sure to discharge capacitor after testing it. You can just short it out. They recommend using a certain amount of resistance for this, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. Okay, uh, there's a lot of different kind of diodes. This is like just a really straightforward. You can tell the direction of the diode by this silver stripe here, and that should be indicating flow this way and set our meter. And this is showing the amount of voltage drop that we have for our flow. Okay, we have about 500 millivolts of voltage drop. Voltage drop is a whole nother can of worms, but I want you to start getting familiar with it. And then we'll always test our diodes in both directions. So we'll flip it and we should have no flow and you should have an OL on your meter. That's OL stands for a few things. Could be open loop, could be over limit. Just depends on the context of the testing that you're doing. And a way to verify that you're on the diode setting is that little arrow with that line. It's for your diode, okay? The way that they have it set up is the opposite of the resistance one. So this one will default to ohms, and if you press function, then it'll go to capacitance. This setting 
will default to continuity and you'll have to push function for diode testing. Okay, so pay attention to the screen and what the meter wants to default to and keep an eye on that. So the last setting, uh, pretty cool. You've got this, this NCV stands for non-contact voltage. What does that mean? Well, the, the meter's got a little antenna on it here, okay? And what it can do is sense alternating current to tell you if it's gonna be hot. It's kind of like one of those little wand things that you might have seen an electrician use. It's like one of those built into the meter. I don't like using them because I don't trust them. I don't feel like they're accurate. I always use my meter to make my measurements with my probes or with my amp clamp. The non-contact voltage stuff can be hit or miss. So be super careful. Just because it doesn't light up doesn't mean it's not alive. Basically, you just set it to that non-contact and it's gonna use that antenna to tell you how strong the signal is. Now it has another function that I think is pretty interesting. And if you're on the NCV slash live, it'll default to that NCV, that non-contact voltage. But if we hit the function, but if we hit the function, you'll see live pop up on here. And then you can use your red probe to find your hot. Okay, that's saying it's hot. So anyways, I think this is a great little meter. If you guys have this meter or any experience with it, uh, let me know. Again, for the price, the context of the price point, just keeping it in your RV, your camper, in the pickup truck, just to do that basic electrical troubleshooting, maybe once a year, every couple of years, you bust it out. If you accidentally you know, break it or whatever, you're only out a few bucks. So I hope you enjoy the video. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you and I'll catch you on the next one.